walking down the sidewalk and you see someone coming at you. They haven't seen you yet, though. And it's somebody you really don't like. You really don't want to run into. You don't want to get involved in a conversation with them. So you very cautiously look around and dart over to the other side of the street. They didn't see you first. Why does that happen? I'm sure it's happened to you at least once. And hopefully you're not the person who's being avoided by somebody else. Last time I was talking with you about the fact that you don't have to say anything. What's going on in your energy is going on and in and all around you. It's not something you get to keep secret. Think about animals and you. Do animals come over and they're attracted to you and they like to be with you? Or are they standoffish? And what about people? Well, stick around because I'm going to tell you at the end how you can find out what your energy is like and how you are, out of your awareness, impacting other people. So why is it so important to understand the energy that's going on for you? Because everybody in your environment's being impacted. The moment you walk into a room, the energy shifts. The moment you walk into a room. Now, depending upon what kind of energy you are emitting, it's allowing people to feel good that you're there or people are just feeling kind of uncomfortable and they don't know why something just feels edgy in the room. They didn't notice that you came in. They just noticed the energy shifted in the room. I mean, you could be in a restaurant. You could be at a meeting. You could be any place. Your energy is going to impact everybody else. And it's mutual. Their energies going to impact you. How did I first discover this? Well, way back in my early days in mainstream psychotherapy, I worked first in a homeless shelter. And if somebody was about to lose it, they, in those days they called it a nervous breakdown. If somebody was about to go into a really not safe place, they call me. It didn't matter how many other people, psychotherapists, were there. They call me. And all I had to do was walk into the room and the person just calmed down. And then when I was doing postgraduate work in psychotherapy and we had the one-way mirror, my colleagues would remark to me, whoa, as soon as you came into the room, there was a major shift in the client. Well, I guess I wasn't aware of that until people started telling me that. My guess is you probably aren't aware of the kind of energy others are gathering, sensing, coming from you. And it's going to make a difference to know that kind of thing, which is why I'm going to tell you about it at the end. You may have heard me share a story when I was going on a very long weekend trip with somebody who is a really good person, but man, was he negative out the wazoo. And I didn't know how am I going to spend the weekend. And we had to stay overnight uh, doing it because it was a faraway trip. And a friend said, I have a different listening of him. And what she was saying is, don't expect that of them. Have a different expectation. So just like that. And I'm clicking my fingers in case you're not watching. Just like that instantly. That's what I did. I had a different expectation. And you're always, always, always going to see what you expect to see. And what you accept is possible. And I never before accepted as possible from this person that he'd be delightful, that he'd be pleasant, that he'd be kind of fun to be with. 
until that moment when I chose to do so. And that's exactly what happened. We had a wonderful weekend. It's not like I was going to go dating him, but what I was afraid might be seriously awful turned out to be really, really, what's the word I want? Successful, peaceful, and I really appreciated it. So when you're looking around in your world, what can you do? Notice, do animals come up to you? Are they friendly to you? I moved into a new neighborhood some months ago, and there's a very, there are a lot of very, very big dogs around here. And one of them would stand in his yard and look at me and bark at me. And I would just send love. Uh, dogs, they don't understand the words you're saying. They communicate by mental images. So that's how you communicate with animals. I think it's not just dogs. I think it's cats too, because I do that with cats too. You can talk and your tone of your voice is going to be appreciated by them. But I was in my yard and he was in his yard barking at me and I just sent love and energy out. And you know what he did? He came down. I was sitting on the ground because I was doing some kind of meditation and he didn't cuddle with me, but he came close enough. He wanted me to pet him and he wasn't afraid of me and he never barked at me again. And every time he'd see me, it felt like he was happy to see me because he was reading that my energy was safe. When I go into friends' homes and their cats who would usually hide, they come out and be my friend. Right now I'm cat sitting. And when I first went into the house, the there was a, there's a big cat and a smaller cat. And they were both a little standoffish, but the big cat, if I even walked toward him, he dashed away. But the second day when I came in, I just kept mentally smiling and loving and telling them and having the tone of my voice that they were safe with me because I love cats. I love people. I, you have to be a real work of art for me to not accept and love you. Anyway, so while I was there that second day, he came up and cuddled with me. I didn't beckon him. He just did it because he felt safe, because he felt my energy. You can decide on the kind of energy you want to come out from you. And you do that by, oh, before I tell you that, I want to remind you that God will always has an offering for you. And when you use my link, you can get the book of your choice, the audio book of your choice. And you know, every week I'm telling you about another one. Well, what got me into all this energy work in the first place was I, I was having a serious health issue and I went to see his name was Avery Canfer, and he called himself the Dalai Lama of Brooklyn. He was the first person I ever met who worked solely by energy, just by running energy. And he recommended a book to me called The Nature of Personal Reality. It's a channeled book, one of the Seth Speaks books, so the author will be listed as Jane Roberts, and it will be in the show notes, and also you'll see it on the video. I learned everything about energy and reality. Well, that was my first book. Since then, I've written, written, well, I have written, but I've also read very, 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 very many books on just what, what is reality. Okay, so, but this was the first one. And I just started listening to it again, because when the universe tells me to do something, I know there's a reason. And so that's what I've been listening to. I actually just finished listening to it this week. So be sure you go and take advantage of that. 
Now, getting back to how do you tell what your energy is? Okay, you can notice how do animals respond to you? Are they coming over? Do they feel safe around you? How about people? When you see a friend, assuming they're not dashing off to cross the street because they want to avoid you, when you see a friend, do they light up? Do they smile? Are they happy to see you? Do they actually say things like, I'm so glad you're here. Some years ago, I was out of the country for three months. And when I came back, that's just what one of my friends said. She said, I feel so much better now that you're back. It's an exchange of energy, which there's no such thing as time or distance. because most of my friends live thousands of miles away from me, some on the other side of the world. But we can feel each other's energy without thinking, gee, it has to travel. Maybe we need to bounce it off a satellite. No, none of that's accurate. There is no such thing as distance. There is no such thing as time. And it's going out spontaneously and the best part when you're sending it allow yourself to recognize you're feeling the other person's energy you can tell what kind of mood he or she is in you just need to tune in and pay attention so that's one way just observe be present in the now the now is the only time that's real it's the only time that exists be present, be here now so you can feel, not think about, not interpret about it in your mind, but feel in your heart what kind of energy is coming from the other person. So you're going to notice that. The other thing, I recommend asking your five closest friends. If they can give you a one word or maybe two or three words that describe you, how they see you, don't give them any more information than that. Just ask them how you are for them and see what kind of common answers you're getting. Because the reason you want to ask five people is because you probably have a slightly different relationship with each of those five people. So by getting five opinions, you can put together what is going to make sense for you to understand who you are. The other thing that I've always done, because I've been a writer all my life. I've been a writer since I was eight years old. And what I say is I write to see what I'm thinking. Because that's what I do. Because when I write, I don't stop and think about what I'm writing. It just comes out. And then when I go back and read it, it's, oh, that's what's going on inside me. I guess some people would call it journaling. However you want to call it, whatever you want to do. That's something else that I recommend doing. Another thing I recommend doing, I'll take a piece of paper and I'll scribble lines, circles, shapes all around it. And then I randomly make dots. And then I'll go in and color in just the sections that have the dots. Well, there isn't really such a thing as random. So what's going on out of your awareness is going to come forth there. And then you're going to get to interpret, hmm, what's going on for me that I would have caused these patterns to emerge? You know, I'm so grateful that you came here today and join us for Let's Get Metaphysical, Connecting Heart and Mind. I am Ali Bierman, and I'm so glad that you're here, and I super appreciate that you join our community, support us, and by doing that, you get to come on a live video call every month with me and whoever else shows up, you can ask questions. We can just get to know each other because you never really know people when you're in a formal setting. 
and I love to connect with people. When I used to treat people in person, the energy that used to pour out of them and from me into them, I was usually in tears because there's so much love that comes through me and through them and through you that's coming from the universe. Wow. I don't know who it's coming from, but it's coming right now really powerfully. And it's not just people. And it's not just animals. I stepped out in my yard the day before all the downpours, it was flooding. And it was, oh my gosh, it was electrifying. There was so much energy coming from the ground, from the trees that are starting to lose their leaves. And I like the way they, communi they communicate with us. You just need to know how to take in the communication. Remember to join our Facebook group. Make a new friend. Get some extras that I'll put in there. And I do that. And also be sure you visit our show page where you can watch or listen to any of our well over 100 shows. Find what makes sense for you. There's a cool thing about YouTube because I make the video and also the podcast, they're evergreen. They're there forever. And I still have people going back and catching early episodes. Make your day great because it's a choice. In fact, I gave a book to somebody really, really special today, one of my Thrive books. And the inscription I usually put in there as you create your world in each minute. This is your life. Choose to win it. Thrive. Don't just survive. It is a choice. And I leave you with a choice to enjoy. That's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment. Because nothing in your life happens outside of you. In fact, maybe I'll talk about that next week. Is there a world outside of you? Or does it all happen within? Because all your interpretations, all your senses, they happen within. I look forward to being here with you next time.